Hi everyone, my name is Raquel and today we are going to talk about how to explain the steps to troubleshoot any aircraft system. Here we have the five main areas of trouble in hot cell heaters. The heater fails to light, the heater air blowers fail to run, the heater fires but runs unsteady, the heater starts and then goes out, and the heater fails to shut off. As you know, when we look at the service manuals, we normally find schematic information to process the information quickly. But then when we explain it, we need to use different expressions. For example, when the heater fails to light, the master switch or the circuit breaker may be off, so just turn on your master switch or close the circuit breaker. As you can see in this example, we've added the article V before the nouns. Master switch, the master switch. Circuit breaker, the circuit breaker. Or the possessive pronoun, your. Master switch, your master switch. Look at this other example. If there is low voltage supply, you should apply external power supply and then try to start the heater again. Here we use try instead of attempt, since try is a more commonly used verb when we speak. So take into account using synonyms when we interpret service manuals. Here we have another example. In case the regulator is not operating properly, check for low pressure or replace the regulator. Or, if the fuel were cut off from the tank, you would need to turn on the shut-off valve in case it were used, or the master solenoid. Finally, if the fuel lines were clogged or broken, you should inspect all lines and connections. It might be necessary to disconnect lines at various points. Note may and might in yellow, since this will be explained later. As you can see, the most common way of explaining troubleshooting tasks is using the first and second conditional. But what's the difference between them? Look at these examples. If the fuel is cut off from the tank, you need to turn on the shut off valve in case it is used, or the master solenoid. If the fuel were cut off from the tank, you would need to turn on the shut off valve in case it were used, or the master solenoid. So, as you can see, both are used to indicate possible situations. If this is the cause, that is the remedy. But, in the case of the second conditional, it is a less direct hypothesis, and therefore it sounds a bit more formal. When we use the first conditional in instructions, we can use when, if, and in case, plus the present simple, as in when the heater fails to light, if there is low voltage supply, or in case the regulator is not operating properly. And then you use may, should, need to, or must, or an imperative, as in the master switch or the circuit breaker may be off, you should apply external power supply or check for low pressure or replace the regulator. It's super easy, as you can see. In the case of the second conditional, the structure is super easy. This starts with if or in case plus a past simple verb or the past simple of verb to be, which in this case is where both for singular and plural, as in if the fuel were cut off from the tank where fuel is uncountable. Uh, or in case the fuel lines were clogged or broken, where the fuel lines are plural. And then use would, should and might plus the main verb, not may, since this is for the first conditional. As in, you would need to turn on the shadow valve or you should inspect all lines and connections. It might be necessary to disconnect lines at various points. But the main question is, which one should I use? 
My recommendation is to use a variety of expressions to explain any troubleshooting task to show professionality through language, in this case, through English. So my advice is that you use both first and second conditional, depending on your preference. Whether you want to sound more informal and straightforward, or rather, you want to sound more formal and less direct. So let's practice. How would it be this first conditional with if and should? Well done. If the matter is burned out, you should remove the blower assembly and replace the matter. Okay, so what about this one? It's a first conditional with in case and may. I've given you some clues so that you can do it by yourself more easily. Great! In case the ignition assembly is inoperative, you may replace the ignition assembly only if the vibrator is in good condition. Don't forget to place the article before any noun, as in the ignition assembly and the vibrator. Finally, here we have a second conditional with in case and would need to. How would you do it? Good job! In case the motor brushes were worn, you would need to replace them. Congratulations! So remember, when we explain a troubleshooting task, we can use the first and second conditionals with different expressions, as if, in case, should, need to, may or might, for example. And very important, don't forget to include the before nouns. Hope you enjoyed this and see you in class. Enjoy your flight 